Welcome to Family Basics 101. I'm Dr. Bruce McClure, and as we continue our series entitled Adult Topics, today we will talk about the adult topic of time management. Do you find yourself running out of day before completing even the most urgent, the most productive, the most significant tasks that are well within your God-given abilities to accomplish? Do you find yourself feeling frustrated because you know inside that you, at some level, failed to make even a nominal advancement in matters of the day that have the greatest potential for improving not only your quality of life, but also the quality of life for family, for community, and possibly even for the world. Time might be recorded in at least three manners. The, the clock time, that's just the chronological day, 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour. And then there is the essential time. That's the time of doing things that are life-changing, that are important, doctor's appointments, going to work, going to school, going to court if necessary, paying the bills on times. Those are essential events that falls within the range of time management. And then there's the purpose-driven things of life. And that's time also. It's where these are things that I am naturally gifted to do, and at the same time, maybe I am doing these and they're just natural for me, or maybe I'm not doing it. But nonetheless, time management falls into three categories. The clock time, we call it chronological time. The essential event time, we call it the none time. And then the purpose-driven time, the kairos time. Adults are responsible for making sure that their, their lives are always utilizing time management each and every day that one lives. Adults are responsible for making sure that family, all of the members of the family that are under the care of the adult in that home, are at least taught the importance of time management in order for life for the whole household not to be simply a passing of time. And this is an adult topic that every adult must have first with himself or herself in order to have a proper conversation in the lives of those within their home. Mayo Clinic has the following recommendations for improving time management. Number one, plan each day. It gives one the feeling of being more in control of the events of the day. Number two, prioritize your task within the planning of the day. Mostly, unimportant task consumes one day more than the important task. So once the plan is made, you may have 20 items on your day planner, but then it necessitates, according to Mayo Clinic, for one to go back and prioritize each one of those tasks. And then number three, according to Mayo Clinic, you must learn to say no to no-nonsense tasks. In order to properly manage time, there are some tasks that might pop up that may not be your task at all. It may not be relevant to anything of significance or insignificance. So Mayo Clinic suggests learn to say no to certain tasks. Number four, break large time-consuming tasks into smaller component ones. You may not be able to accomplish it all within an hour. So you may have to break it up and say, I'm going to work on this for a certain amount of time. I'm going to 
accomplish 25% of it, 30% of whatever it might be, and then I'm going to lay it aside, and then I'll address this, and then I'll come back to that. Number five, evaluate how your time was spent at the end of the day. So go back and do a self-check of how well, or maybe how not so well, your time was really managed. Number six, limit distractions. That becomes the responsibility that is challenging, is how do you make sure that with those important tasks, those priority tasks, those essential tasks, and those natural gift ability tasks that you know you are supposed to accomplish, how do you limit the distractions? And many times, it's the distractions that will impede the accomplishment of a specific task. Number seven, make sure you get sufficient rest and sleep in order to be at the optimum of functionality every day. Good rest and good sleep are important for individuals in time management. Number eight, take frequent breaks throughout the day. There's nothing wrong with taking a five or ten minute break to get up and walk around, to stretch your legs, to, to kind of have a, a, a natural mental break, a natural physical break, even from those important events. And then number nine, if necessary, take a time management course. Sometimes it's just a matter of learning how to manage time. And it's a good individual who's able to admit that maybe I don't know how to properly handle myself and time management. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 19 through 23, or, uh, yes, 19 through 23, a certain scribe came to Jesus and said, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head. Jesus is saying to an individual, if you're serious about following me, then you, you must understand this. In the world, foxes have time. And there are certain times in the lives of foxes or birds that they hibernate. They are nowhere to be found. In essence, let's learn from nature that even the animals know they need to get rest. Even animals know there's a time not to fly. They understand there's a time not to be out hunting. And yet when it's purpose season, you can't stop a fox from hunting, nor can you stop a bird from flying. And Jesus says, follow me. If this is your purpose calling, follow me. And then the disciple says, but let me first go and bury the dead. In other words, once my family member dies, then I'll come and follow you. Jesus says that's not good time management because I'm calling you into what we would call the kairos. This is your purpose calling. And whenever it's your purpose calling, you never put off working today within your purpose. Prioritize time management is what he's talking about. I'll see you back in class again next time. Don't be late and don't skip class.